stay triggered. Pew pew. Pew. Burgundine bros, everybody that's out there. Welcome back. Uh, let's check out Yuki today. So we're going to go over the United Islands of Marelva characters here. And uh, we're going to cover Yuki. He doesn't... Yuki does not come initially. He comes later on as you're fighting throughout the game, I think. I think within 10 battles, one or so about that. So let's uh, talk about him today and let's see what he's all about, okay? So he is a swordsman, the only swordsman you can get in the United Islands of Marelva. His growth is pretty good, actually, and I'm using the Steam version to record this because they actually updated what I asked for in the past. Character growth down here and uh, rune growth. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Look at this right here. Uh, on the Switch version, they do not have this upgraded. They do not have this updated, is what I kind of meant to say. But they do not have that updated, so it. Um, I kind of have to record in Steam and here because I've got all the characters in the uh, Switch already done. Um, <clears throat> so essentially, he is a pretty good swordsman. I'd have to say he's pretty very good. Honestly, the United, United Islands Morelva get a very good cast of characters. A lot of brawlers, but still very good with stats and all that. So what do you get with a swordsman? Well, you get this banana sword. Um, essentially, it's more like... Um, they're, they're not essentially... I mean, Yuki looks more samurai-ish. He's probably more like on a samurai side. But uh, these characters are kind of like Middle Eastern swordsman type of characters. So that's more of um, a scimitar, I'd have to say, kind of sword that they get. Uh, they get this uh, light armor, this light breastplate here. They get a gauntlet, a ring. <clears throat> get this ability critical up here, which... Uh, if we look at it, it's uh, increased the chances of landing critical hits. They usually do that pretty well. Um, and uh, hit point recovery B is really just putting them through the um, the basic uh, knight class uh, to get them there with that. Um, but what do they get with their basic stuff here? Now, I don't have him up to a sword master, but I do have him as a swordsman, so this is the middle of the road class. This is uh, breaks off of the knight class actually. And uh, they're really good for putting them in a forest and being evasion tanks in a forest. Now Fang Slash is the basic attack. It's 120 power. Uh, pretty decent attack normally. Got an accuracy bonus too. Deals moderate damage. Okay. Getting used to the buttons here on this uh, on the Steam version here, sorry about that. Uh, Iado Blade, this is your basic upgraded attack power. This is a 170 power, same accuracy boost, but it is a sit and wait to attack move. Now what do I mean by that? I mean basically this is a pre-move, so you have to move into place, end your turn, and then the next turn you'll be able to accomplish pulling this skill off. Now, it's got kind of the same ground and sky possibility to strike. Not very good on sky, very good on ground though. Range of one does give you a bonus of a green dot element to your attack. But you also gotta notice that it does cost 60 MP to do. So you gotta have MP to do this. So what we're looking at here, MP wise, is you've got You've got this uh, swift stance down here on the bottom. You're like, what is that all about? Well, essentially, it just increases your, just really increases your agility. Now, how much does increase your agility? You'll have to check that once you burn this skill. Once you use this move, you'll have to have enough MP to do it. If you don't have MP for it, you can't do it. So once you run out, you run out. But it costs 25 MP to pull off, and once you do, you just crank up your agility, you sit in the forest, you become an evasion tank, people try to hit you, you can pretty much always counter them back because your accuracy is really dang good. Um, and that's kind of what you gotta do. So what do you wanna do with this character overall? You got 60 and 20 for that kind of MP. Well, you probably wanna go out there 
once you're about to get hit or you think you're about to get hit, um, get into a good position. Try to keep other people positioned around him. This is kind of key for these samurais here. Now, samurais in the past were a bit tankier in this game. It's really kind of a glass cannon in a sense, if you could say that. I, I don't know how to describe it, but they're really not as tanky as they used to be. I've had situations where I put my swordsman out in a position, he got surrounded, and within two or three hits, he was literally KO'd in this game. And you're like, wow, they're kind of squishy. They can be squishy, but the reason they're squishy is because people, developers, everybody's voiced their opinions, wanted a tank that you could kind of take down. And so this really comes down to like you having fun gambling on the chance that you're going to have a better evasion tank. But you can get knocked out quite easily if you are surrounded. In this game, surrounding is a lot easier than in Grand Edition. So what essentially you want to do is you want to surround your guy with a couple good, good heavy monsters on either side so they can't surround him. And then put him on the pinnacle forefront well, if I could draw this little uh, diagram here, let's say you got a couple monsters here, right? Right next to them. And then you got a couple monsters here, right? Like right next to them. I'm, like what I'm drawing right around this uh, section here. I know it's a little crude, but um, got a couple monsters here, right next to them like this. And then a couple monsters here. He can't get surrounded that way. And you can keep him on the peak end of the arrow, like right in front of your army. And then they'll keep trying to attack him. If you got like a little four spot to put him into, that's the perfect place. But if you can't, pop the swift stance. Once you get there, keep your monsters like right there, just like that. Like I'm like I drew this little little arrow segment. Keep the rest of your army like tucked behind him and all that. And um, he'll be a good evasion tank because then they can't surround and pound him. You know, that's just kind of a joke, the kind of thing I say, but. They can't really surround him and, and take him out too easily. Now, you got to be careful about magic because, you know, magic can take him down. Although Yuki is pretty good for intelligence. You can see 72 intelligence is actually quite fabulous for having intelligence for a knight. Uh, so intelligence-wise, pretty good, but you have to be careful of those flame spells because they are weak to flame. Green is weak to fire. Um, but you put them in the front line. Do the swift stance, pop the swift stance. You get an occasion that comes up and you can do Iodo Blade. Then pop your Iodo Blade on a leader or a monster that you could probably get a kill on and uh, just take it out. And you're going to really love that. Otherwise, you're just kind of stuck with the Fang Slash um, and all that. So what is this guy about? Yuki is a male, age 26, swordsman. This young swordsman is a descendant of the House of Hazam. He breaks away from his clan and joins the Merle of a war effort in order to make a name for himself. Although it hurts him to see how fragmented his clan has become, he believes if he achieves enough success for Merelva, he'll one day be able to call his father and younger sister to his side. The battlefield thus becomes a shortcut to the restoration of his family's honor. Now, Yuki and his family is very much like Miguel and uh, Lagel's family in Grand Edition. He can find his family and they'll call him to them or he'll call them to him. And so you can gain family members as you play, much like you could in Grand Edition with Miguel, Liguel, and Castor. Uh, so it's very much like that in a sense. Um, he is an exceptional swordsman, stat-wise and all the thing wise i mean he's a really good source he's very reliable in battle now you just have to be careful about the surround effect because defense wise is 105 normal tanks and stuff go a, a bit beyond that for defense so it really comes down to his agility and his agility is pretty dang good 84 agility right there is really really good exceptionally good and all these things down here that you see are just fantastic. So for D, D's okay. You know, I'm not I'm not really too worried about D, but the, the you know the rune growth still pretty good. So anyways, let's check out his uh, let's check out his growth here real fast, and then we'll conclude the video. 
And before we do any more, if you really like this, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Help this channel grow, please. Uh, I've been doing this for quite some time. So let's look at this here. So this is the fighter class here. You can either choose to go down the night path, which forces you into either paladin or dark knight, or instead of being a knight, you can be going to the swordsman class, which as you can see, knight class goes to 120 defense naturally. Swordsman goes to 105. So defense wise, not that great. Even in swordmaster, still 115 defense, not even as good as the middle of the road knight class. So going to swordsman, you're not relying on defense that much. You're relying on your agility more and your ability to take down the enemy quickly with crits and all that. But if we go to Swordsman, you can see how there's a difference here. If we look at the Swordsman on the left and the Swordmaster on the right, the Swordsman gets, um, they get the one green orb for offense and defense and Swordmaster gets three. So you just would go from one to three immediately. It's it's amazing. You just, boom, you jump up there. And you can see these stats on the, the right here where your agility is jumping up. You're, you're really growing with agility and I'd have to say strength. Strength and agility are really kind of key for this class. So if you really want to help him survive more, maybe give him defense or agility, pieces of, pieces of gear, um, if you're really going for that hardcore super attacker, then maybe just throw it all to the wind and go straight up for crit damage with weapons and stuff to make him really, really good. So that's Yuki here. A fantastic swordsman or swordsmaster. However you level him up. I didn't get him all the way up to 20 on this file on a different one I do. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, drop the like, drop the sub. Drop all the things, um, and I'll see you in the next video. We're going to be doing Sophie up next. One of my favorite characters in Morelva besides Umamaro. <laughs>